Hey guys, it's Jay here, and if you've spent any time in Logic, you've probably heard of the DrumKit Designer plugin. And what it essentially is, if you're not familiar with it, is it's a sample pack that models multiple different drum sets that can read MIDI information. So in this case, I have a loop that I put together just using Apple's built-in loops, and it's playing through the Detroit Garage setting right now. So the drum kit designer basically lets you swap out the snare and the kick, and it also lets you tune the frequencies of the toms, um, hi-hats, or sorry, hi-hats, cymbals, ride, and uh, basically kind of shape it how you want it to sound. But now, uh, relatively recently, they've added a new functionality called producer kits that gives you a lot of control. So just for now, I'm going to play the loop I have and I'm gonna play it through the normal Detroit Garage samples through Drum Kit Designer, just so we can compare how it sounds to the producer kits. So here we go. Okay, very cool. So we're just gonna click over here where it says producer kits and we're gonna select Detroit Garage Plus. That's one way that you can know you're using a producer kit is that it has the plus icon. So we're gonna select that. It's just gonna take a little bit of time to load because it's gonna be applying a track stack. And uh, if you don't know what a track stack is, it's essentially a whole bunch of tracks that are all summed together and you can individually control each of these tracks. And this can all be controlled by this uh, master fader over here. So if you've ever mic'd up a drum set before, you may recognize all these terms. So there'd be your overhead microphones, your kick in, your kick out. There's a snare top, snare bottom, hi-hat microphone, all your toms, a room A and room B. Um, and then there is a leak track. And this is very unique to the producer kits because it's essentially your bleed. So anything that would be bleeding into the hi-hat microphone or maybe the snare drum microphone or even kick is all put on this leak track, which is very interesting because you'll know if you're working with uh, MIDI samples, you don't have bleed, so it can sound a bit unnatural and adding a little bit is really interesting. Um, but I'm just gonna go a little bit more in depth and play through all the microphones so you can hear what they sound like because this is really, really cool, guys. So starting at the top, we have our overheads. And uh, this is plural, so this is a, <laughs> obviously, um, it's a stereo overhead track. And uh, here's how it sounds. I'm actually gonna press Alt and click on here so this is full volume. Cool, so that's relatively quiet, but that's your overhead track. Uh, then we have our kick in microphone. and our kick out microphone. So the kick in mic is usually pointed right at the beater or sometimes towards the edge to get a little bit more tone, but its real job is to capture the attack of the drum. And then the kick out is to get like the bass frequencies um, and kind of just the the overall tone of the drum. So that would be your woofiness, that'd be your, your ambience, and the kick in would be your attack. So when you combine them both together, you get a nice attack and a nice tone. So that's very cool. Uh, then you have your snare top and snare bottom. So your snare top would sound just like this. And that would be obviously on the top head of the snare. And then your snare bottom would be facing up at the snare wires. So you're gonna get a brighter sound, uh, kind, of, kind of more brash as well. Um, and it's gonna sound like this. So combining that together, you get the, the overall picture of the snare. And this is really cool because you can turn down the snare top and maybe even in favor of the snare bottom and get a much brighter sound or vice versa, you can get a drier sound by getting rid of the snare bottom. You can even mute it completely. Uh, then we have a hi-hat track. So in this case, it's panned to the right. I suppose this is kind of an audience perspective. So the audience perspective would be uh, how you would be listening to the drums on stage. So the hi-hat would be to the right if it were a right-handed drummer. And you can now pan it to the left if you want. 
Uh, there used to be a way around this where you could just put on a direction mixer through here, through uh, imaging, and you could flip it around 180 degrees if you wanted to uh, change it from audience to drummer perspective. But obviously now you can switch that around. Although, although I suppose the same thing would have to apply to overheads because I think this would be uh, a little bit... I think this would be panned audience perspective. Yeah, the hi-hat's on the right. So that one you would have to put the... Um, this guy on here, the direction mixer, if you want to switch that. But anyway, um, up next we have the Tom microphones. Pretty self-explanatory. I have a little fill right here. Oh, does he not play on the toms there? He does. I'm not sure. Oh, I guess maybe it's just on the low tom. These volumes are... That's, that's why. I don't know why the volume was down on there, but I guess it was. Okay, so that's just on the low tom. But anyway, um, those are the Tom microphones, and you can see these are also panned. Uh, and then we have a room microphone. So this is basically just a microphone that's placed in the room to capture the overall sound of the drums. And I find it's really cool. You can compress it really heavily and uh, get a really cool like snare sound and, and kick sound, and it's fun to mess around with. So that's what uh, this is what the room sounds like. And then we have our leak track, which we went over before. So if we compare this, say, with the hi-hat on its own, this would be kind of unnatural, you know? But then we put the leak in, and we get a little bit of uh, bleed from the rest of the kit, which is really, really cool. So that's, that's basically it, but there is one more thing um, that's really cool. If you double-click over here, you get this uh, kind of smart control thing, which will allow you to adjust the kicks, snare, toms, um, hi-hat, cymbals, and, and then the percussion if you have any uh, tambourine shaker or whatever on there. But it will turn up these instruments or these uh, elements of the kit for all the microphones. So say you want to turn down the hi-hat in general, this will turn down the hi-hat in the room microphones, in the overhead microphones, um, and in the leak tracks, like everywhere, it'll take get rid of the hi-hat, which I think is really, really cool. I don't know how they did that, but I'll show you just right in the room here. Well, let's do the snare, for example. That's really cool. And let's try adjusting the level of the kick as well. Right, and we can boost it too. Same with the hi-hat. Well, actually, there's no hi-hat there. Right? So, very cool. And there's actually, I believe this is the on and off. So, if you want it completely gone, then you would flip this off. Yeah, now the snare is completely gone. So, there you go. There's also a built-in compressor that you can use. Um, it's kind of just a set attack and release. Um, this is kind of what it sounds like. It's there if you want to use it. And then, of course, you can uh, affect kind of the sound of the room. This is also kind of a vague adjustment, I suppose. It's their kind of take on an EQ. Uh, but really, this is where you'll get the most use in this smart control menu. Okay, so while I was editing, I noticed that I missed something pretty big. And uh, that is when you go into the overhead track, you have a drum kit designer plugin that's kind of running this whole thing. Uh, but what's different about it is that you can swap out the tom sets, um, as well as the cymbal sets, and even the hi-hats. Um, and this little AB switch here will actually let you change the sound of the room from room A to room B. So that's also quite important. And you can also turn off the overheads in the room track in here, as well as the leak track in certain kits. So that's it, guys. The producer kits in Logic, they're really cool. I really suggest you guys try it out, especially if you're recording electric drums and you want to get more control over your sound. This is a great way to do it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you found it informative, please leave a like. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, leave it in the comments. And as always, thank you all so much for watching. Take care, everyone.